Yeah, I mean, I think yeah, this, many of his supportive Pokemon are looking pretty good here. I mean, I like it. Kyogre lo looks great. He's going to need it to help control that Groudon. Mm -hmm. um, if Kyogre can not Groudon out, that's going to let Metagross run crazy, and it can uh, take down a lot of these Pokemon on, on its own. Um, Amoongus, also likely to be a key player in this matchup. Um, can do a number of fun things, but I think most importantly, um, it can help protect those two Pokemon who really yep. are going to have to be the core of the offense, most likely for uh, Henry's side. Uh, also worth noting, um, you just have to kind of check when you see Como, -O, like, well, how many fairy type Pokemon on the other side? Only one. So uh, any attempts Como -O makes to use its Z move will at least succeed in the sense of giving it a stat boost. Mm -hmm. Though um, certainly don't want to face it off against uh, <laughs> Tapu Koko, who uh, it typically is taught Dazzling Gleam. But that's one thing that will be important for Yuki to learn also. If instead this Tapu Koko is the uh, supportive version with Assault Vest, it usually doesn't know any fairy type attack, mm -hmm. which is going to make it a little bit more difficult to deal with. Um, it's another Pokemon who could potentially have some trouble with Metagross. But uh, unfortunately, with all these poison type Pokemon, another thing to keep in mind, uh, Metagross in the video game championships usually aren't taught psychic type moves unless they're paired with Tapu Lele. Um, so perhaps having to rely on something like Stomping Tantrum instead, which is going to make it a little more difficult for it just to tear through this team and you know, don't get that same type attack bonus for uh, using moves mm -hmm. that match Metagross's type. Yeah, that will be a really interesting thing to see if Henry can play around here. But we're about ready to kick things off here for round nine of Swiss at the Pokemon World Championships. And I'm excited to tell you that the leads are going to be for Yuki Gang. Gengar and Amoongus. And on the other side, we have that Yveltal hitting the field already with its partner, Metagross. Yeah, well, these leads for Yuki are definitely poison. Um, good, kind of a good stop, spot for Yveltal. You know, I think the important thing for Henry with Yveltal, just try to get at least for a few turns where it can put some uh, attacks out there and get some value. Uh, these are both Pokemon that Yveltal's fine facing down. I certainly would prefer not to be put to sleep by Spore, but a nice spot. On the flip side, the real struggle of Gengar is that it can Mega Evolve and get that Shadow Tag ability. Mm -hmm. uh, you'd assume with this team, uh, it's probably capable of Mega Evolving um, as the only Pokemon there who can. Uh, so he's going to get that Mega Evolution up early. Yep. And now uh, Henry's got to be careful not to leave anything in that could lead to an easy setup for Xerneas later on. Well, wow, Gengar Mega Evolving is going to put Henry in a little bit of a situation here, but we'll be able to match that with a Mega Evolution of their own. Metagross getting super powered up there. And that's going to be a, wow, icy win coming out from Gengar really early to kick things off. Yeah, Metagross after Mega Evolve is going to lose that clear body ability, so this will slow down both of these Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yveltal actually taking quite a bit of damage from, from that. Um, that's, that's sizable there, about a fifth of damage in a Z-move right off the bat. Both of these players getting pretty aggressive here. Yveltal trying to get out some damage, making its point before it gets taken out by it's the threats on uh, Really team. integral to use the Z-moves quickly. <laughs> yeah. You've got to get something with it. We have the Z-Crystal and a restricted Pokemon in one slot. You know, you've got to pick it, you've got to get some value, and uh, taking out Amoongus could be huge if you can do it. That would be a great play. and. Wow, it's going to hold on. So Amoongus looks like it's going to reveal that it has that Focus Sash, but did he double into it? That is the question. And he did. We'll get that knockout onto the Amoongus. Ooh, the effix for? Wow. Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm watching uh, the 2011 video game championships. You almost never see Amoongus with the effects for ability. Uh, more frequently taught Regenerator, but I guess it makes sense. You know, if you're trying to use that Focus Sash, you know, it's about to be knocked down to one HP. Maybe you don't think Regenerator will heal you enough if you switch out. Um, Kind of a strange pairing, but it works out really well. Metagross now has been slowed down. It's sleeping, and it can't switch out because of Shadow Tag. So mm -hmm. this is most likely a very easy knockout for Groudon. Uh, probably going to be able to get a hold of this Eveltal also. I would be surprised not to see a Protect here, but you know Henry can't switch. So uh, this combination pretty strong. Normally when you see Groudon, it's like, oh, I'm just switching my Kyogre. But uh, no such luck for Henry. This is going to be tricky waters to see Henry navigate here. That Gengar looking pretty scary, especially after that Mega Evolution. But what to do in this situation if you were Henry? You, do you just sacrifice your Metagross? I see a Taunt, uh, perhaps trying to play around. Uh, you built all using Tailwind and trying to avoid any potential Sucker Punch as well. Well, the Eruption is going to come out from Yuki's side of the field. It is going to hit both Pokemon here, and it's a double knockout. Wow, Yuki off to a great start here. Yeah, he uh, he really cashed in. You know, that's what you've got to do with that Mega Gengar, where it's super frail, so you're not going to get too many of those free icy wins. Um, instead, you got to make sure that you have the once you have the advantage, you can take it. Uh, the double knockouts are as big. You know, we'll see Kyogre come in here almost definitely, but with only two Pokemon remaining, that allows Yuki to switch his Groudon out of battle, bring it back in later, yep. and then finish this match with the control of the weather. Yeah, 
definitely gives Yuki the driver's seat right now for setting this pace. But Kyogre going to do its best in the situation that it is given. Henry still has a chance here. He just needs to target down the right foes. Yeah, it's a kind of an interesting spot, too, where um, we're now seeing the same situation we saw the other way, where if this Amoongus happens to be holding a Focus Sash, you know, maybe it can try to survive a Fire-type attack from ground on later. Um, I think if I'm uh, Yuki here, I try to get another Icy Wind off. Um, you know, you'd like to see Gengar get some damage, but I think really what's important, you break any potential Focus Sash for the Amoongus, and then you can also make sure that uh, if you reduce Kyogre's speed, that your ground will be quicker than it once the two of them face off later in the match. Yeah, that speed's going to be really important because you want to dish out as much damage as possible, obviously more than your opponent, right? So I want to see Henry even, if, if this match does not go his way for this first game, then maybe make some adjustments to get that damage out a little bit faster and, and target down the right things. That sport, that effect sport, was really, really crucial information for him to learn in this first game. Looks like we're going to see the final Pokemon getting switched in for Yuki. Uh, he is kind of in an awkward spot where this is a, or I guess it could be a free spore, but you know, I expect maybe Gengar will for the, go for the taunt instead of the Icy Wind then. Uh, kind of a lot of moves you like to use, but it's, oh, it's the Sludge Bomb instead. Wow, Sludge Bomb into the Kyogre is going to do about quarter damage here, but Kyogre is able to fire back with a Water Spout of its own, hitting both of Yuki's Pokemon, but not able to get a knockout on either one. Spore, though, does find its mark onto the Xerneas, so it will be at least asleep for a few turns. Yeah, this is kind of awkward now where, um, you know, the Xerneas is pretty much dead weight and the Gengar opting not to protect there takes a lot of damage. Um, it saves itself by damaging Kyogre enough, uh, but still, like, there's actually, there are definitely, again, there are ways that this can go wrong <laughs> where, you know, especially if the Moongus is holding a Focus Sash to allow it to survive a Fire-type attack from the Groudon later, um, still going to be pretty tough to knock out a Groudon with Kyogre here, but, um, you know, it's, it's inching back into the game. Uh, if you are on Yuki's side, you're really looking for a way to bring Groudon in for free. Uh, on Henry's side, you gotta try to like maybe maneuver Spore, put that Gengar to sleep, try to knock out both of these Pokemon at the same mm -hmm. time so that you can get all the advantage you can. But this could be a crucial taunt. Yeah, taunt is going to really limit Amoongus' options right here. Xerneas will take a turn of sleep, so that will bring the counter down by one. But Ice Beam coming up from the Kyogre will be just enough to finish that Gengar off. Yeah, that actually works out pretty well for Yuki, though. Uh, you know, you get this uh, taunt down onto Amoongus, so you don't have to worry about uh, Groudon being put to sleep. Uh, still hasn't done any damage to it, so if a, a potential Focus Sash would be annoying, uh, but probably not game-breaking. You know, a, a taunted Amoongus having to fight Groudon under the sun, um, it's not a great combination of things. And also, you know, uh, the Xerneas still has a decent amount of health. It might be able to survive an Ice Beam from here, uh, which means there's a lot of attacks that Henry is going to need to get off to close this game. Mm -hmm. uh, no way now to get rid of uh, Groudon's son, so he's going to have to find a way to navigate through it for the rest of this game. Well, Xerneas is still fast asleep here, so it looks like that Spore is working out pretty well for Henry right now. But Groudon able to take the first swing in the damage dealing department will be Ooh, Amoongus does have Focus Sash. The Battle of Focus Sash is, uh, unfortunately for Henry, it's going to be tough to take the same advantage, but it stays alive for now. Well, Kyogre will get a chance to use his Ice Beam, but it is not enough quite yet. Clear Smog going to do the last bit of damage that Henry needed to be able to finish off that Xerneas, and now it's just Groudon left. Yeah, he takes a Pokemon advantage, but... Uh, still I, a tough <laughs> battle. I gonna say, yeah, I, I don't know how that helps, because <laughs> uh, Eruption is still a thing. Uh, but I guess it kind of makes sense. I mean, again, one of the situations where um, really isn't a get-lucky option for Henry. He just needs, uh, or needed Yuki to make some mistakes for him. Uh, but Yuki wisely doesn't open the door. He's getting mm -hmm. that Eruption, and he should be able to close out this game pretty easily. Absolutely. So this game won probably heading into Yuki's direction unless something goes drastically wrong. But for the next game, I feel like Henry knows a lot of information that's going to be pretty critical into making some adjustments to take a game. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's been pretty interesting watching this one where Yuki is playing that Gengar so brazenly. <laughs> like, you know, it's one of the frailest Pokemon that um, are kind of high high tier options in the video game championships. But usually because of that, you have to protect a lot, play really conservatively. Uh, there's been nothing conservative about the way Yuki has played this game, or he's played pretty much aggressively as he could possibly play every turn, and it's paid off for him. It really has, but Eruption coming out from Groudon will be enough to finish off Kyogre, and Yuki takes game one of this round, nine of Swiss.
Pr pretty pretty fascinating match there. You know, uh, the tempo of this match could not be more different from most yeah. of the we've, rest of what we've seen, where uh, both sides playing kind of fast there. Uh, Henry has to play fast with the Pokemon he started out with, where he just, you know, needs to Yveltal. try to get as much value as he can out of that Yveltal before it runs into Xerneas, where uh, Yuki, I think it kind of just is a team play style thing. You know, we mentioned in the pregame that his team is very... Uh, aggressively built rel mm -hmm. relative to most of the rest of what we've seen. So it makes sense that he'd play it aggressively too, right? You know, if you've gotten to this point by, uh, you know, playing fast and hard, you don't want to like suddenly slow things down mm -hmm. because you're uh, you know, on the precipice of advancing. Um, but uh, it should be interesting to see how th this gets played out. I think on Henry's side, what I learned is that, well, I mean, if he's not going to protect the Gengar, like, I mean, maybe they'll have to target a little more aggressively in that slot. Mm -hmm. But that's also a really dangerous thing to take out of that game one. I mean, because that's not... You know, that's kind of a, a tactics adjustment, not a strategy adjustment, right? right? Where um, it'd be one thing, like, oh, well, I need to bring these Pokemon to have an advantage. It's a little different. We're like, well, I think I can guess what my opponent's <laughs> going to do because, you know, the first time you uh, crucially attack into a Protect, you're just going to lose game two, and then you'll be out of the series. Um, I think with the way that Yuki played that one, that's a really tough series to have fallen behind in. Um, he's probably going to uh, press the advantage and put... Uh, Henry and some tough decisions where he's going to make calls here. So he's going to have a really uphill battle to try to make it through this game. Uh, and if he loses this one, he's out. So uh, Yuki in the hand, just one more and he'll make it to day two. Yuki's probably pretty confident going into this second game of this match. But, you know, we, we saw this before. Henry can't really take everything for granted that Yuki has offered in terms of the information. Because look at Alex Underhill's match that we saw a little bit earlier on stream. That was a surprise. You can definitely pull out some of those. But going into team preview here, I think that Henry has at least a little bit of information. Amunkis is going to be a tricky foe, especially with that effect score. Yeah, I mean, that's another thing to keep in mind <laughs> that match, too. I mean, effect store is a, it, there's a pretty low chance that it activates at all. Low level that it activates and gives you sleep, which is certainly the worst of the potential outcomes. Um, not really something you can play around all that much, where you can't really just afford to not use physical moves against, or uh, contact moves, excuse me, against Amoongus. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, at least on Henry's side, you got to figure, well, if I play the, the exact same way, it's almost definitely not going to happen to me again. Uh, but it's still something to keep in mind, right? Where if he has the option to finish it off with a special attack next time, he will likely choose to do so. <laughs> Probably. I, I definitely feel like Henry played the right way in that beginning of game one, where targeting down the Amoongus twice, just thinking that there was a focus sash there, was the correct play. So I think that Henry has what it takes to be able to take this game too. But we're about to find out if any adjustments were made to those leads. Yeah, I'll be very excited to see uh, how Gengar in particular has played this game. I think. Uh, it, it's opened the door for a lot of doubt to the minds of both players where, you know, can, 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 will that really happen again? Will he try that? <laughs> can I get away with that again? Yeah. Is Gengar going to protect? Is it going to be an open target? Really excited to see if that's going to be the case, but it's not going to be Gengar leading the charge here for Yuki's side of the field. Amoongus does come out, but Xerneas instead of that Gengar. And on the side for Henry, we are seeing Tapu Koko come in as an adjustment. Ooh, I really like this adjustment on Yuki's side. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of Pokemon that kind of struggle dealing with that Xerneas on Henry's side of the field. So maybe feel like, all right, well, I'm, with the, this lead matchup, I can get the Geomancy up with a Rage Powder. Um, we saw both sides kind of being a little conservative about using Rage Powder in that first game. Uh, I feel like in this one, there's relatively little choice. Um, though there is, I think, some temptation if you are Yuki to go for the Spore on Eveltal instead. I think probably what happens if he goes to the Geomancy is that they, the two Pokemon team up on Amoongus, perhaps, get that knockout, um, and then Metagross comes in, and that becomes really difficult to deal with. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe on Yuki's side, you kind of pump the brakes a little bit, like, all right, um, Ooh, we see Sky Drop, though. Wow, Sky Drop from Tapu Koko is going to just completely remove Amoongus from the field for a little bit here. And it's going to be free territory now for that Z move from Yveltal to hit its mark. Yeah, that should do a lot of damage, although, you know, there is that type resistance. So it's not like you're going to be a one shot, but you, know, you never hate getting free damage on that Xerneas before it's been able to boost its stats. I like that Henry's still going with the aggressive line of play as the opener move here. So Xerneas is going to be in a little bit of a pinch. Yeah, it's pretty solid damage for yeah. a resisted attack. Well, Xerneas may have taken out half of its health there. It will be able to get this Geomancy off. Amoongus, though, still nowhere to be seen. Yeah, kind of interesting position because of that. Uh, the one really great thing about this, if you're Henry, uh, is that the Geomancy boost in Xerneas, the speed is actually going to work against him on this turn. Uh, next turn, the first Pokemon to move will be Xerneas, so it's going to miss Tapu Koko since mm -hmm. it's still uh, up in the sky. Another thing that's an option for Henry now is he can 
get Evil Talaw for free if he wants to, perhaps switch to Metagross. Uh, since Amoongus hasn't moved yet, it's most likely using Spore, although he's not going to worry about it anyway. Just get that Protect off and let the uh, turn play out. Yeah, it's a really safe play here coming out from Henry, knowing that Xerneas is only going to have one single target there. Skydrop doing about a third of damage there to Amoongus, and that will at least break the Focus Sash. Foul play, though, into the Tapu Koko slot, not very effective. Aggressive. Uh, interesting to think that he did that in the context of what he saw on turn one. Uh, perhaps just trying to get some chip damage there. Um, if this Tapu Koko is holding an Assault Vest, which you would certainly assume that it is after uh, seeing Sky Drop, at least make it a little bit easier to get a knockout with that chip damage, perhaps. Um, also, Evil Soul, seeing on the field, uh, does get away with it, although it wasn't being targeted this turn anyway. So uh, a bit of a dead turn for Henry, but at least you know, he's got the field reset now. He can kind of adjust. Uh, really needs to play carefully around that Zerni. It's important to get that knockout. Its health's been reduced pretty significantly. Uh, the one great thing about doing that is it's going to be right on the edge of a of KO range from that Metagross, but I can't do that while Amoongus is around. Can't do that. Sucker Punch does find its mark into Xerneas. Not going to do too much there, which means that Xerneas will be able to fire back with a Moon Blast. Tapu Koko on the receiving end of that, and it will get knocked out from that blast. Moongus now using Spore. Only target left on the field is going to be that Yveltal. So unfortunately for Henry, that Z move might be all we see from that Yveltal. Yeah, man, that's kind of a strange turn where it just like, <laughs> Henry's like, surely he will knock out Yveltal this turn, and uh, no. Uh, kind of cute there, where he does get some Sucker Punch damage, and you know, it's not trivial again, weakening enough that a, and a Bullet Punch would surely get the knockout from here, but uh, instead, uh, Amoongus getting that Spore off, and uh, it's, it's interesting, because not only did he not switch out Eveltal in a situation where maybe you would have expected him to, uh, but he called it, because any other Pokemon on the team uh, would not have been put asleep by Spore because of the electric terrain, so uh, nice read by Yuki. I mean, it kind of makes sense for a player who's gone this far using a team like this. You know, he's right. good at getting inside his opponent's heads, uh, making the correct predictions and he's close now only a couple more plays and he'll be moving on to day two this is where it gets really tough here for both of these players because there's so much on the line with this one game henry needs this game win in order to keep his dreams alive of moving on to day two and yuki needs this one to actually move on so metagross will be able to mega evolve here and now we're seeing a very signature move from the amoongus rage powder just try to take the pressure off of Xerneas, so can get off a Dazzling Gleam. Yveltal gets knocked out by that, and Metagross takes that one on the chin. Yeah, gonna have to try to knock out this Amoongus, though. If it survives this attack, it's almost over. Really important to pick up this knockout here. Wow, it will get the knockout, and Amoongus will have to leave the field. Yuki not looking too good after that one. Definitely was relying on Amoongus to help set up some extra turns here. So this is a big lead, and we have a similar situation we saw last game where Henry only has two Pokemon left, has to bring in this Kyogre. Uh, Como O coming in for Yuki. We get to see his, uh, well, not his final Pokemon, but you've got to assume that the Groudon's Pokemon in the back is Groudon. going to be able to switch in for free now. Um, but some real danger, too. Uh, Metagross almost... It's very difficult to make the read to not use Bullet Punch on Xerneas this turn because if you get it wrong, you're probably eliminated. Uh, but because of that, perhaps, you know, Como can get a cheeky attack off. Um, there's some temp temptation, I guess, to Ice Beam that slot with Kyogre. Um, but, you know, you're, you're pretty happy here, I think, if you're Yuki. Yeah, he looked a, he looked a little a little wary after losing that Amoongus, but I think you're right about that, that that Groudon has to be in the back, will be able to take control of the weather that's on the board right now. But both of these players, knowing that it's coming down to the wire, taking as much time as possible to think about all of the outcomes. Yeah, this one is super close where, oh, he, he does Ooh. go for the bullet punch. Ooh, he does go for the bullet punch, goes into the Xerneas slot, is enough to get the knockout, so Xerneas will not be able to do any damage this turn. This is good for Henry holding on to this one. But it's time for Como -O to make its move here. Ooh, this is going to be real spicy. Yeah, I think with the special defense boost for this should be enough that Como is not only going to get some damage off, but will likely be able to survive an ice, ice beam to see another turn. And uh, it's going to be close, but uh, Yuki looking good. I love this animation. <laughs> Clangorous Soul Blaze. Going to be music to my ears, I think, and maybe music to Yuki's as well. But Como is going up, getting ready to find its target here. And I think we're all excited to see if it's going to get a knockout. Ooh, Metagross going to be on the receiving end of this one. Oh, both Pokemon not actually taking too much there. Will be able to hold on. Yeah, those stat boosts are going to be a big deal, though. I oh, mean, those stat uh, boosts. Groudon alone could almost finish this game. And Como, if it provides anything after this turn, uh, seems like it'll be able to clinch it. This is a big ice beam, though. Uh, Henry really hoping for a critical hit on this one. 
That's quite a bit from the super effectiveness, but it's actually not going to be enough to knock out that Como O, so it will survive another turn. And with this next one, we're going to see what Yuki's fourth and final Pokemon is, and it is that Groudon. Yeah, I mean, unfortunate to lose the Xerneas there for Yuki, but he is able to get the Groudon in completely safely, doesn't take any damage. Uh, we've already seen the Groudon, at least last game, move before the Kyogre. Uh, seems like this Kyogre is probably a little bit more defensive in nature, so likely uh, genuinely is much quicker. Um, certainly don't see Metagross uh, knock out Groudon in one hit very often, especially with a Como there that might be able to knock it off before, it, or knock it out before it moves. Um, so you got to think long and hard if you're Henry here, you know, like, is, there, is there any way I can pick this up? But Ayuki's put himself in a really, really good position and uh, maybe just a turn away from moving on to day two of the Pokemon World Championships. Ooh, it's coming down to the wire here, but both players are ready to make their moves. Bullet Punch going into the Como O slot is not enough to actually knock it out here, which means that Como O gets a chance to fire back. Both Pokemon going to be on the receiving end of this one. Metagross hangs on just by a thread here. Kyogre will be alive for at least a little bit longer. But Groudon gets to move first. Eruption, probably enough to finish this one off. And that means Yuki is going to take this game and move on to day two.